So we're going to change the transmission fluid on this 2005 Honda Pilot. And in order to get started, we need to level the vehicle so it's level. So in order to do that, I'm going to jack up the back here and put blocks under the rear wheels so it's level. Now I'm going to lower the rear on the blocks. And I also have blocks up on the front so everything's level. We have one more piece of wood under this wheel. Boom. We do. We have four pieces of wood on this one, and then three right there. Because we know that this part of the garage here goes down towards the drain. So in order to compensate for that, we put another board under there to level the vehicle. Straight down here on the transmission, here is the fill plug. And this is where you'll fill the transmission with fluid. So in order to get this, we need a 17 millimeter socket. And I just have a bunch of extensions piled up. So that goes right on there. Since this is pretty tight, I wanna give myself more room from the windshield. I don't wanna accidentally slip and hit the windshield and break it. All right, so that broke the bolt loose and broke nothing else. But you can see how much tension that was under. So now we can take this out the rest of the way with our hand. And of course, don't forget to take that washer out with it. So a uh, breaker bar, of course, would be the best to get this bolt off, but both angles of the breaker bar fits in, you're not able to break it loose. So what we need to do is take a 3 8 ratchet, put this on here, and now we're able to put a cheater on here and we have more leverage. Now, of course, if you can use a breaker bar, use a breaker bar. You don't want to strip out the ratchets in this ratchet. Now with the cheater bar on here, I'm going to go ahead and try to break this loose. All right. There we go. Now it's broken loose. So we're going to put it in this container and then measure how much we take out so we know how much to put back in. But we're going to do a little bit less than that because we do have a little bit of, we do have a little bit too much transmission fluid in it currently. So we're going to subtract a little bit away from that. But I'm going to take this bolt out. So now with this bolt removed, we can go ahead and take it out. And I think that's a new record of how little I've got in my hands. Look at that. There's nothing. So right here, this is your magnet. This has some uh, just metal particles that it's caught. You always want to clean this off every time you change the transmission fluid. And actually looking at the transmission fluid, it looks pretty dirty. That needs cleaned. Wow. Definitely needs new stuff. So now I'm going just to take this uh, piece of paper. I'm gonna wipe all that off. Yeah, look at that. See, there's a lot of stuff that was on there. And also, some of this should be kind of red. The transmission fluid that's on there should be red, but really, it, it's almost black. The transmission shouldn't look kind of like oil. So wipe this off with a rag. Make sure that's nice and clean. We don't want to put any of that back in the engine. Now we'll go ahead and clean this up on the wire wheel just to make sure everything is clean. So in order to get this crush washer off, what I need to do is just take a pair of pliers, grab it like that, and then I can take a ratchet and ratchet this off just because it's been crushed around the threads. We want to get this off so we can recondition it because right now it's definitely not in the best of shape, so it just needs reflattened. So since this washer is really not in very good shape at all, we're just gonna take some 60 grit and start to clean this up and make sure it's flat. So this is starting to flatten up, but you can tell it still needs some work. There's low spots around the ring here. So this is just taking a lot of work with the sandpaper. Now I've noticed some of the, uh, whenever you buy the transmission fluid, you can get some that come with new crush washers. I guess we didn't get that, but I mean, they're pretty cheap. You can get a bag of them for not very much, but since this didn't come with any, this is just faster to resurface it. So now we have this all cleaned up, and I would definitely recommend getting a new crush washer just because it's a lot of work to flatten this, and it's really better to have a new one. But now we have all this resurfaced, and this is aluminum, so it's a little bit different than your copper crush washer, but let's go ahead and put this back on the car. Now this is all drained out. It's been dripping for a while. We can go ahead and put our plug back in and screw it in by hand. So now we'll just go ahead and snug this up. Right there. 
So we have two milk jugs here and they're both the same. What we're gonna do is fill this up with the old stuff and then make a mark where that is and then transfer the mark over to this milk jug and then we'll fill this up with the good stuff and then put that in the transmission so we know we have the right amount. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pour this into this milk jug. So we'll make our mark right around here because this is right where that level is. So what I'm going to do is just mark it the same around here. And then whenever we pour in the transmission fluid, then we'll be able to tell how much more we had in it. Cause we were high on this transmission. We put too much in the first time. So this one was a little bit high. There's a too much transmission fluid in here. So just to compare how much we had at all. So this is the Honda Genuine stuff. And over here we have this Valvoline Max Life. We had a transmission line blow and we just needed something temporarily to put in the transmission just to get it a few miles home. So this stuff did work, this works temporarily, and it says on the back, right, Honda slash Acura. So this is the correct temporary stuff. It also says in the manual you can use Dex Dextron 3, but now we have the Honda Genuine stuff. So when we're filling this up, we should just be a little bit below that line because on this one, this is where the level is and it's just a little bit high on the stick. So when we put three and a half quarts in, this should just be a little bit low. So I'm gonna mark this right here at three quarts. So we put more like three and three quarters, maybe a little bit less. So that's just a little bit below this line. So let's go ahead and pour this into the transmission and see where our fluid level is. That fill plug is pretty far down there. In order to get to it, I'm just gonna take a long funnel with a piece of vinyl hose on the end of it. Just so now we can take this and feed it all the way down there into the hole. So that's right there, now we're in the hole. So now we'll go ahead and start pouring this in. Once we pour in about three quarts, we will run the engine and just check to see where we're at and then add the rest. So just add this in slowly. You gotta watch that second funnel too. That one just about overflowed. So this is just gonna be kind of a slow process. So now with the three quarts added and maybe a little bit more, we're gonna go ahead and turn the engine on, wait till the radiator fans kick on and the engine's up to operating temperature. While we're waiting for the engine to warm up, it should be right there in the middle of the heat gauge. What I'm gonna do is just shift it through the gears, work that transmission fluid in and make sure everything's running smoothly. So right here it says check the fluid level with the engine at normal operating temperature, park the vehicle on level ground, shut off the engine, remove the dipstick yellow loop from the transmission and wipe it with a clean cloth. So the needle is not moving up anymore, it's staying steady in that spot so now we know the engine is at, op at operating temperature. With this transmission you check it with the engine off, that's different than a, a lot of other transmissions. We'll just wipe the fluid off the first time. Put it back in. So we got just a little bit on the bottom of the stick there, but we definitely need to keep adding. And with this new fluid, it's definitely hard to see where the level is, but I'd say it's right there at the first, first dot, about right there. So now we'll go ahead and pour in half of this, and then we'll warm it up again and check it again. So it looks like the reading right now is a little bit above that first hole right there. So now we're gonna go ahead and pour some more in. And just make sure you take your funnel out of the fill plug. It's okay to leave the fill plug off the engine, but if you leave your funnel in there, there's a little, I don't know, maybe it's some kind of shaft that's spinning and you don't want your funnel to get caught on that and get ripped to pieces. So now we'll just go ahead and lift that rubber hose out of the hole and we can just set it to the side somewhere where it's not gonna go into the hole and we're gonna start the engine. So it's a faint line, especially with this new fluid, but right under that first dot, there is a line and that's where the fluid is. 
and that's where we want it to be. So the fluid level is correct. So we got anti sleeves on this bolt so it'll come off a little bit easier next time, but you still want it to be tight. And that's what the crush washer helps with. So let's go ahead and put this on. Crush washer with it and thread this into place. Now we'll go ahead and tighten this up. Uh, right there is good. So it seems like it's shifting through its gears fine. And the transmission is running smoothly. So after the first test drive, we're taking a look at it and it's right there at the first dot. It's a little hard to see, especially with the newer fluid. I can tell it is darkening up a little bit. It's not a bright red anymore, but it still has that reddish tone to it. So that's how we change the transmission fluid in a 2005 Honda Pilot. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.